Well done Ford keeping the 5 liter Coyote V8 for the 2024 Ford Mustang. I don't know why some people are doubting that this is an all new Mustang. I mean, it's coming out of the horse's mouth, literally, the, the dark horse's mouth. <laughs> the all new seventh generation Ford Mustang. That's how Ford is describing it on their press media site. So this is genuinely all new according to them. It's gonna come with head turning design cues. So let's talk about that first before we get into the nuts and bolts. The looks of this new Mustang, it's a tad bit underwhelming. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't look bad. It's just that I agree with what some people have been saying in the comment section on other people's videos. This does look like a Celine body kit or something <laughs> on, on top of an S550. That's kind of what this 2024 Mustang looks like, and it's fine. I mean, don't get me wrong. It looks good with the performance package and with the darker colors. And they are offering it as a convertible as well. The front end is kind of more boxy and a little bit more plain, but the headlights look cool and the taillights are super angled now for 2024, which I thought was an impressive design. Others have said that it looks like a, a Mustang and a Camaro had a baby together, and I can see that as well from the rear end. The, uh, the rear haunches kind of does remind me of the Camaro. What really matters here is the engine <laughs> because they have kept the five liter Coyote V8. It's easily gonna be the last V8 powered or even gasoline powered Mustang to ever exist. Everything is going full EV. I mean, in fact, they are investing $50 billion in electric vehicles through 2026. That's how much cash they have invested, and that's a clear indication of where the market is going when one of the largest car manufacturers like Ford is investing that type of money into EVs. It's just the inevitable future, but we got to give respect where respect is due they are making and they are investing the money into this new seventh generation. You can argue that maybe they could have done more, but the reality is they haven't shared exactly everything with us for this new model year. We don't have the official specs or exactly how much horsepower and torque it's gonna make, but I believe in the unveiling, they said that they're going for around 500 horsepower. So this is supposed to be the most powerful naturally aspirated five liter Coyote around the 500 horsepower mark, which is great. That's gonna be more than the current Camaro uh, with the 6.2 V8 and the Scat Pack 6.4 liter Chargers and Challengers. So this will be the most powerful version, but we're not really sure if they're gonna come out with some supercharged Shelby model. That might not be happening. And even if it does happen, I feel like it's gonna be like the Corvette Z06, right? You know what? I don't even really care. Out on the street, I really love the 5 liter Coyote V8. It is my most favorite engine amongst the current trio. I like it more than the LS and I like it more than the Scat Pack uh, 6.4. It just has the most charismatic sound out of all three current muscle cars. Really what I want to see them improve here with the Ford Mustang for 2024 is the driving dynamics. Because even the S550 with its independent rear suspension, it's great, it's pretty much the best handling Mustang for sure, but it still has that ambiguous nature that causes people to land this thing into a ditch or to spin out or to hit crowds of people. Why is that? That's because there is no communication with the steering for the S550 Mustang. You don't know what the front end is doing. You don't know what the rear end is doing. The car is super snappy. It's unforgiving, especially out in the rain. I mean, there's just no communication with the driver. So you have no idea what the car is doing. And that's why so many people wrap it around a tree. So I hope they address that with this new 2024 Mustang. And I believe they have because they're saying that they have tightened up the steering rack. It has a quicker steering ratio, which is great. That's really what this car needs and they're giving it this digital e-brake system. <laughs> it's a physical e-brake, but it's digital. It's meant for the novice. So when they say things like that, I'm thinking they're trying to make this Mustang a little bit easier to drive, and that's good, a little bit more predictable. Uh, really, the, the purpose of the electronic drift brake is, well, obviously for drifting purposes out on the track. It will be behaving like a mechanical handbrake despite it being an electronic one. Uh, again, it's for the novice to perfect and to improve their drifting skills. So that actually made me kind of happy to read that. I'm thinking this is supposed to be a little bit more of an approachable Mustang because here's the thing. Whenever I say that, people always comment and say things like, oh, well, that's because it's a rear wheel drive car. All rear wheel drive cars are difficult to drive. And that's total nonsense. <laughs> that's not how every rear wheel drive car is like. There are so many 
manageable rear wheel drive cars that even an amateur can get into and drive perfectly, even under hard driving aka the Camaro, that's a perfect example. The Challenger, very easy to drive. It's a long wheelbase car. You're not gonna be crashing that because you you have so much time to correct for that vehicle uh, when something like a Challenger gets out of hand. You know exactly what the car is doing. The Lexus LC500 or really any rear wheel drive Lexus, they're super predictable. You can toss them around, you can drift them. You don't even have to know how to properly drive and you can easily whip those cars around. A novice, a professional, anybody. But the Mustang, not like that. So I'm thinking they address the driving. However, they're just not going into more details about it. So unfortunately, I can't tell you for sure what they've changed or whether it's even riding on a new platform, which it should be because it's the new generation. Uh, other things with the engine, they're saying that they were able to get the higher horsepower out of the new five liter Coyote by implementing their innovative dual air intake box and dual throttle body design. That's fine. Uh, it's supposed to minimize induction loss by enabling higher airflow rates, which is cool to see, but power and speed, that's not really the Mustang's issue. It's the driving. But regarding the transmission, they are keeping the six speed manual transmission. They will be offering that. However, hold your applause because it is gonna be that same get rag <laughs> six speed manual, which is a massive disappointment because I despise that manual. I would actually, if I was ordering this 2024 Mustang, I kid you not, I would, I would get the 10 speed automatic, which is a total shame to say because the problem with the get rag manual is, well, some people have like an issue with the forks or whatever. There's the reliability issue of it. That's one thing, but I just hate the way it feels. It has an ambiguous clutch pedal. You don't know when it's engaging. And then you have the you know wonky shifter where it just feels imprecise. And it's just not a joy to use. Unlike the Tremec six speed manual, I wish they would just throw that in there. If they really cared about this car, they would have given us the six speed Tremec, but they haven't. Again, maybe a different model might come out with it, but you know, the Dark Horse really seems to be their top level car. There is a Dark Horse S and a Dark Horse R. However, that's really like track cars stripped down and racing spec ready Mustangs. It's not really for the street. Uh, you just have one regular Dark Horse and that's gonna be the top of the line Mustang. And of course you have the GT performance package like always. And that performance package is gonna give you a tower brace, a Torsen limited slip differential, the MagnaRide active suspension. Well, that's gonna be optional even with the performance package. Uh, but you will be getting wider rear wheels and tires, larger 390 millimeter front and 355 millimeter rear Brembo brakes. The performance pack Brembo brakes, literally one of the best brakes you can ever get in a car from the factory when you option it up with the performance package on the Mustangs, it really is worth getting and it's worth paying up for the performance package of the Mustang. You're also gonna get braking ducts for enhanced cooling with the performance package and a standard auxiliary engine cooler, engine oil cooler, I'm sorry. And you will still get the optional Recaro seats that's gonna be available along with the active exhaust. Uh, speaking of exhaust, yes, it sounds good because it's a V8, but you will also be getting a new feature here where you can remote start this car and you can rev it up from the outside using your key fob. So that is pretty cool. And even the 2.3 liter EcoBoost will come with that feature as well. Regarding the interior, I was pretty disappointed by this because it looks pretty much unchanged. What they've done is they just giving you two screens, which is optional. Um, what they're displaying here is the fully loaded Mustangs. So it's got the 13.2 inch infotainment screen combined with the digital gauge cluster, which the gauge cluster does have some new cool animations. They're using the Unreal Engine found in typical video games to give you some different graphics with the Mustang. It makes it look like it's at a drag strip or it's drifting and stuff like that. You know, a couple of little gimmicks like that, which is nice to see but not really necessary it still looks like a generic plastic interior and they've gotten rid of one of my most favorite parts of the s550 mustang and that was the toggle switches i really like those metal toggle switches now they just give you some regular plastic buttons and they removed all of the physical climate control buttons and they just shoved it into that 13.2 inch screen but when you get the performance package if you get the recaro seats that's definitely a welcome touch the recaro seats are again totally worth it very comfortable and very supportive and the new infotainment 
It should be pretty excellent. The Sync 4, it's typically easy to use and it is now a more premium looking infotainment as well. They're still gonna give you the BNO sound system, which they seem to be improving year after year. So hopefully the BNO sound system will sound decent for this new 2024 Mustang, and it will come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Another thing that I really want them to improve is the crash test safety, because as of right now, the Camaro is the safest kind of muscle car amongst the trio. The Mustang is number two, so hopefully they can fix some of the uh, the, the crash test issues and make this the safest muscle car. Chevy's just going to ditch the Camaro. They're not even going to try with that anymore moving forward. So this is all we have is the Mustang and I hope it's a safe car now. Uh, they will be offering you the Copilot 360 so you will have the safety features which is great but what I want is the actual crash test safety to be improved. But overall that's pretty much all the information that we have on the Ford Mustang. Uh, for 2024 it should be available summer of 2023 this seems like a great upgrade over the current generation s550 mustang i am currently partnered with a company known as auto companion and they work with a lot of the good ford dealerships in the washington dc area and they're able to give you a seven percent off discount with the current generation Mustang. So it's just like from a monetary perspective, taking advantage of that discount makes more sense because we know that even when this comes out and even with Auto Companions dealerships that they're partnered with, they're most likely gonna charge at least MSRP for the 2024 Mustang. And I hate paying MSRP for really any car. And let's be honest, there is probably gonna be a price hike over the S550 Mustang as well, because again, it's that last generation of a V8 muscle car, right? So there's gonna be a price hike there, I'm sure. But it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts. And if you wanna take advantage of the 7% off discount I mentioned through Auto Companion, I will leave all their information down in the description box. Like I mentioned, they're located in the Washington DC area. You can either pick up the car or if you live in a different state, you will have to have the vehicle shipped and that's gonna be on you. You're gonna to have to pay for that. And there is also a broker fee associated with this. It's about $500, but if you sign up with my link, you can take $50 off of that. It's pretty much the best deal and discount going on for pretty much any Ford product. And they're offering like 10% off on Ford F-150. So if any of that seems enticing to you, you need a new vehicle, I will leave all their information down in the description box. They also have a new leasing calculator you can play with. Thanks again for watching this video. I'll have the next one on the end screen here and I'll see you there.